Let's study 10th standard ICSC chemistry chapter 7D sulfuric acid. It's called the king of chemicals because of its myriad uses which we shall study in this chapter. Earlier it was called oil of vitriol. Let's study how it is manufactured. The process is called contact process. Step 1, the chamber is the sulfur or pyrite burners. Here sulfur is burnt or iron pyrite is burnt to get sulfur dioxide. This page is cancelled. This sulfur dioxide is now converted into sulfur trioxide, but notice the conditions when it, when it pentoxide, potassium oxide, temperature and pressure. It's an exothermic reaction and it's a reversible reaction. That means Le Chatelier's principle will be applicable here. And the next step is the absorption tower. This sulfur trioxide should be dissolved to get sulfuric acid, but don't try to directly dissolve it in water because if you do that to form sulfuric acid, then you will get a mist of sulfuric acid, which is very difficult to condense. And sulfuric acid vapors are very corrosive. So it's better to first dissolve it in conch sulfuric acid to get pyrosulfuric acid, also called oleum. And then when we dissolve it in water, we get sulfuric acid of the desired concentration. <clears throat> this page is cancelled, except the last point. The catalyst needs to be heated only initially because once the reaction starts, then the temperature is maintained. It's an exothermic reaction, that's why. But why should we maintain the temperature at 450 to 500 degrees Celsius? Well, see, it's an exothermic reaction and it's a reversible reaction. So as per Le Chatelier's principle, if the temperature is low, then the forward reaction is favored. But if it is too low, then the reaction will slow down. So keeping in mind both the points, we have discovered that this is the optimum temperature to get 98% conversion. What about the pressure? Well, it's one to two atmospheres. Here we see that three volumes of gases will react to give you just two volumes. So there's a decrease in volume. And whenever there's a decrease in volume, a high pressure will facilitate the forward reaction. But a very high pressure may not be advisable because it may cause damage to the various pipes and towers, and it may also decompose the catalyst. So the optimum temperature realized is one to two atmospheres. And then there's a give reason why are sulfur trioxide vapors absorbed first in conch sulfuric acid and not directly in water. I just explained that. Sulfur trioxide is the anhydride, means, that means without water. That means if you add water to it, it forms sulfur, sulfuric acid. So if you remove all the water from it, what do you get? Sulfur trioxide. So this is called the anhydride of sulfuric acid. Color, colorless odor, odorless taste, slightly sour to taste. Nature, it's dense, oily, hygroscopic liquid means it absorbs moisture without changing its state. That's why it should be kept in tight bottles. Otherwise, the conch sulfuric acid will become dilute very soon. Density, where well, it's heavier than water. Solubility, it is soluble in water in all proportions. It forms a constant boiling mixture at 338 degrees Celsius, containing 98.5% of the acid, which means if you want to concentrate it further, Boiling won't help you because if you boil it beyond this, then along with water, even sulfuric acid vapors will vaporize in the same ratio as they were in the solution. So effectively, the concentration will remain the same. So it's of no use. And look how the boiling point is so high. That is why we call this acid a less volatile or a non-volatile acid. Conductivity. Pure acid is a bad conductor, of course, because high concentration of acid will have hardly any hydronium ions or any ions at all. A dilute acid, because it will have a lot of water, ionization will take place and ions will be formed, which will make it a good conductor of electricity. But how do we dilute the sulfuric acid? Well, do not add water to the acid. Instead, add acid to the water. You see, if you have sulfuric acid and you add water to it, then it's an exothermic reaction, by the way. And the sulfuric acid will just spurt out because of the exothermic reaction. On the other hand, if you add acid to the water, 
notice that water will be in greater quantity at that time. So the little bit of acid that we start pouring in will quickly settle at the bottom of the water. It's denser than water, by the way. So it'll settle at the bottom. Yeah, even this will be exothermic, but at least the acid will not spurt out. And hence, this will be safer. This explains why it is it cannot be concentrated by just boiling beyond this. Now let's study its chemical properties. It's a dibasic acid because per molecule when ionized gives two hydronium ions. Dilute acid gives, shows all the typical properties of an, of an acid with active metals except lead of course. It will give you hydrogen gas. Uh, lead will not show this because it forms a coating around it soon. Base with base, it'll give you acid. Uh, it'll give you salt plus water. That's neutralization reaction. Carbonates and bicarbonates will react with it to give you water plus carbon dioxide. Sulfite and bisulfite will give you SO2, and sulfide will give you H2S. So these are typical reactions which you must study. Now the fact that it is a dibasic acid means that it can form two types of salts. If sodium hydroxide is insufficient, it will form an acid salt. That is, both the hydrogen ions won't be replaced by the metallic cation. Rather, only one of it will be replaced and one hydrogen ion will still stay. This is called partial replacement and this is an acid salt because when dissolved in water, it will give the hydrogen ion and that will show some acidic properties. On the other hand, if there was excess of sodium hydroxide, then both the hydrogen ions will be replaced by the metal cation to give you a normal salt which has a pH of 7. It's neutral. Conk sulfuric acid is non-volatile. So it has this property that when reacted with a salt, it will give a more volatile acid. This is something we have studied in the previous chapters, how sulfuric acid is used to manufacture HCl or HNO3, the two respective volatile acids. Note that the temperature is always kept less than 200 degrees Celsius so that the salt form is an acid salt that is a bisulfate is formed because a sulfate will be formed when the temperature is greater than 200 degrees Celsius and we don't want a sulfate to be formed. We are happy with the bisulfate since the sulfate would have stuck to the glass and the crust is easy, is difficult to remove. Also, why waste fuel? Just keep it less than 200 degrees Celsius if it works, right? Don't forget to write conch below the equations here. Below H2SO4. Now, sulfuric acid, when concentrated, acts as an oxidizing agent. Only conch sulfuric acid acts as an oxidizing agent. That is why it can react even with inactive metals like copper. But it won't give hydrogen, of course, it'll give you water and sulfur dioxide. Only conch sulfuric acid can react, not dilute. Some other properties which show oxidizing. So you can see it reacts with carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus. Here it forms phosphoric acid. Here it forms carbonic acid, but we never write carbonic acid. It's an unstable substance. And this is also sulfurous acid, but again, sulfurous acid is an unstable substance. So we must write it like this. Or if you write sulfurous acid or carbonic acid, show a reversible sign. <clears throat> uh, no, actually a reversible sign won't work here. Just write it like this. Now, with metals, it will give water, not hydrogen, because here it is not acting like a typical acid, it's acting like an oxidizing agent. And of course, sulfur dioxide gas is also released. Next, as a strong dehydrating agent. Not only is it a hygroscopic agent, but it's a dehydrating agent. It loves water. Even if water is not there, for example, if you add conch sulfuric acid to glucose, there is no water here, okay? It's not a glucose solution, it's pure glucose. It will break the bonds between the elements, create water out of it like this, and then absorb this water. So some, some of it is absorbed and some of it is just given out as steam because it's an exothermic reaction. So this shows its dehydrating property. Because it is hygroscopic, it can be used as a drying agent to, to dry certain gases and remove all the moisture from them. Now, you can't use it to dry gases like hydrogen sulfide or ammonia because they will react with sulfuric acid. We need to learn this equation as well. 
Now the observation here, this is normal sugar, okay, the, the kitchen sugar, sucrose. So when we add conch sulfuric acid to it, we will see some black mass left behind, which is sugar charcoal, and of course steam being released, which would turn cobalt chloride paper from blue to pink, proving that it is moisture. These are the observations. One more reaction we need to know is when it reacts with ethanol, that's nothing but alcohol, at 170 degrees Celsius, it forms ethene, which is also called ethylene, another name. This process is called dehydration of ethanol, and we will study this again in organic chemistry. Note that it gives steam again. What about blue copper sulfate, that is hydrated copper sulfate, which has water of crystallization, that's why it's blue. Well, Pong sulfuric acid will take away this water of crystallization and what will be left is white anhydrous, that is powdery amorphous copper sulfate. So again, this shows its dehydrating property. We need to know in which reaction, which property is being shown by the sulfuric acid. The properties are either typical acid or non-volatile acid or dehydrating agent or oxidizing agent. Four properties of sulfuric acid. Now, what are the tests for sulfuric acid? Well, for conch sulfuric acid, we have two tests. Either you react it with copper and you will see sulfur dioxide gas is being evolved. But what's the test for this gas? Well, that would be it will turn acidified potassium dichromate solution orange to clear green. So if that happens, it means it is conch sulfuric acid. Another test could be you react it with sodium chloride or potassium chloride or any salt at less than 200 degrees Celsius, of course. And you will see that a gas is released. And now this gas will, uh, what's the test for HCl? Well, one of the tests is dense white fumes with rod dipped in ammonia solution. And when a rod dipped in ammonium hydroxide is brought in this gas, you will see dense white fumes. What is this dense white fume? Well, it's ammonium chloride. So if you see that, that means the gas was HCl. It proves that indeed this beaker had conch sulfuric acid. But what about dilute sulfuric acid? How can we identify that? Well, you just add barium chloride or lead nitrate to it and you will see a white precipitate being formed. Precipitate means insoluble, of course. Um, lead sulfate is insoluble in hot water or even on heating. This way we can easily distinguish dilute sulfuric acid from say dilute, sul dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute nitric acid. You see, if you add barium chloride to sulfuric acid, it will give you a white precipitate. But that is not the observation with these two acids. Because if you add this in uh, hydrochloric acid, you will not see any white precipitate. Even with barium chloride added in nitric acid, you will not see any white precipitate. Because here, barium nitrate will be formed and barium nitrate is soluble. All nitrates are soluble. And even in uh, HCl solution, barium chloride is soluble. So that's how you distinguish between sulfuric acid and the other acids when it is dilute. And finally, the uses of sulfuric acid. It has many uses. Uh, you just have to learn the ones which uh, are not cancelled. Fertilizers, fibers, dyes, drugs, rayon and nylon. By the way, nylon was in invented in New York and London simultaneously. That's why it's called nylon. Really? Explosives, TNT, acids. Yep, also for forming phosphoric acid. Oil refining, pickling of metals, as you know, we should uh, remove the impurities on the surface of the metal before galvanizing it. Galvanizing is a process to protect the metal from rusting. It is used in car batteries and also in the preparation of certain substances mentioned. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.